Imagine pointing at the night sky tonight and thinking, somewhere out there, just around the corner in cosmic terms, is a planet scientists call Earth 2.0. That planet is Proxima b, rocky, maybe oceans, maybe clouds, tucked inside the habitable zone of the red dwarf star Proxima Centauri. 4.2 light years away, the closest star system to ours. Close enough that the light leaving the star tonight will reach Earth before the next Olympic Games. Far enough that, well, we're not getting there anytime soon. In this video, we'll unpack why the very numbers that make Proxima B exciting also slam the brakes on any let's just build a ship and go fantasy. We'll look at energy budgets that rival planetary economies, survival problems straight out of a disaster movie, and one very moody star that likes to throw lethal tantrums. By the end, you'll see why Proxima B is both the most tempting and the most unreachable destination in the sky. August 2016, the European Southern Observatory drops the headline, Closest Potentially Habitable Planet Ever Found. Twitter melts. Artists paint sunsets over alien oceans. Overnight, Proxima B goes from data point to destiny. The planet orbits its star every 11.2 Earth days at a distance where liquid water could exist on the surface. The constellation Centaurus suddenly feels like the next suburb. The emotional hook is real because 4.2 sounds small, like your favorite cafe one town over. But 4.2 light years is 40 trillion kilometers. That's not next suburb. That's every road ever built on Earth laid end to end. 1,300 times, and the cafe is closed. Let's translate the concept of a light year into relatable road trip time for better understanding. When the Apollo 11 mission launched on July 16, 1969, it, it took just three days, approximately 76 hours, to cover the distance of about 384,400 kilometers to the moon. In contrast, NASA's Curiosity rover took about seven months, or roughly 210 days, to traverse a staggering 225 million kilometers to reach Mars, highlighting the vast distances between celestial bodies in our solar system. Then there's Voyager 1, launched in 1977, which is our fastest human-made object, traveling at an impressive speed of 17 kilometers per second. Despite this velocity, it will take Voyager 1 an astounding 73,000 years to reach Proxima Centauri, the closest known star to our solar system, which lies over four light years away. This daunting timeline can be a tough pill to swallow when explaining the need for long-term funding to committees focused on immediate results. Astronomers opt for light years as a unit of measurement, not just for its simplicity, but because saying 40 trillion kilometers generate such mental overload that it can leave people feeling bewildered. By using light years, they provide a clearer perspective on immense cosmic distances, making the vastness of space more comprehensible. The choice reflects a deeper understanding of the scale and the time involved in our exploration of the universe. Rockets work by throwing mass backward fast, pushing the rest forward. Chemical engines max out at about 4.5 kilometers per second, exhaust velocity. To accelerate a modest one-ton probe to one-tenth light speed with chemistry, you'd need more fuel than exists on Earth. Nuclear fission helps, but even that demands thousands of times more uranium than humanity has ever mined. Fusion? We're perpetually 30 years away and still can't get net positive energy in a lab, let alone in deep space. Antimatter is perfect on paper, except we manufacture it in nanograms per year. Bottom line, we literally cannot fill the tank, because the tank would be larger than the planet. Suppose we steal a fusion engine from the year 2150. The trip still faces a cosmic shooting gallery. Interstellar space looks empty, but at 10% light speed, a sesame seed dust grain carries the energy of a stick of dynamite. Hit one every week for decades and your ship becomes cosmic Swiss cheese. Then there's radiation, cosmic rays, supernova shockwaves, the whole universe trying to microwave the crew. Earth's magnetosphere blocks most of it, 
A starship must bring its own shield or accept lethal doses. And remember, arrival requires braking. You'll need to dump the same energy you spent on acceleration, except there's no rest stop parking brake in deep space. Miss the timing by even a few seconds and you overshoot into the dark forever. Proxima Centauri, the closest known star to the Sun, is classified as a red dwarf and is often referred to as the diva of stellar society due to its unpredictable and volatile nature. In 2016, this dim but remarkable star erupted in a dramatic flare, resulting in a staggering spike in X-ray emissions that increased 60-fold, an intensity 10 times greater than any solar flare documented in the history of our Sun. This intense stellar activity likely had catastrophic consequences for Proxima b, the planet orbiting Proxima Centauri, potentially stripping away any atmosphere and transforming what may have been habitable oceans into vapor that was violently expelled into the vastness of space. Recent astrophysical models indicate that the stellar wind pressure surrounding Proxima Centauri is approximately 2,000 times greater than the solar wind experienced on Earth. To put this into perspective, envision yourself standing atop Mount Everest, the highest point on Earth, during a Category 5 hurricane filled not with rain, but with a relentless barrage of charged particles. Such extreme conditions would be reminiscent of standing on a scorched landscape, where the remnants of what once could have been a thriving biosphere have likely become nothing more than a desolate fossil. If Proxima b ever hosted life or a sustainable environment, the relentless forces of its star have almost certainly obliterated those possibilities. Cue the dreamers. Breakthrough Starshot proposes fleets of gram-scale chips pushed by a 100-gigawatt laser array. In 20 short years, they'd whistle past Proxima b snapping photos. Catch? The craft can't break. Flyby only. No orbit, no landing. Just a 20-hour blur of data. Fusion rockets could shorten the cruise to a few decades, but controlled fusion is still a lab experiment with an overdue schedule. Generation ships, massive rotating cities with thousands of people, sound epic until you price them. Quadrillions of dollars, centuries of construction, and the social gamble that your great-great-grandchildren still care about the mission brief. Every one of these solutions is locked behind physics and engineering gaps we currently have no credible plan to close. Does this mean give up? Absolutely not. Our ancestors didn't wait for Boeing 777s to cross oceans. They built rafts, then caravels, then steamships. Each step looked impossible until someone did the math and swung the hammer. The same cycle is happening now. Every failed fusion test, every micrometeoroid impact study, every laser sail prototype chips away at the wall between us and the stars. Proxima b may be unreachable today, but the effort to reach it is already spawning better radiation shielding for medical imaging, more efficient solar cells, AI-driven navigation systems. The impossible keeps a polite distance only until we find the right wrench. So yes, Proxima b is impossible, today. The distance is monstrous, the energy budget is fantasy, space itself is a hazard, and its star treats planets like stress balls. But impossible has a short shelf life around human stubbornness. Today, the thought of standing on Proxima b is a bedtime story for engineers. Tomorrow, it might be breaking news. Until then, the chase is its own reward. What technology do you think will finally get us there? Fusion sails, antimatter bottles, or something we haven't imagined yet? Drop your answer in the comments. I read every single one. And if you want more stories from the edge of what's possible, hit subscribe and ring that bell. The universe is vast, but the conversation is just getting started.